Hello, this is the Ramblings of an Indisciple Mind podcast for Friday, uh, October 14th, 2016. So I, I'm going to talk today about some things that I've heard on podcasts lately that uh, are things that I, I feel like I want to talk about. So the first one is from a new podcast that I will actually probably be reviewing uh, next week, more than likely. Uh, I'm going to get back on the regular schedule next week. And this particular episode was talking about an area in Washington, D.C. that's been predominantly black for, for many, many years. And the demographic is shifting. White people are starting to move into it. And the term that is used for this is gentrification. Gentrification. And, you know, it was interesting because, you know, the host of the show was Caucasian, like I am, male. Uh, the, uh, there was a co-host who was female and Asian, uh, she said. And they were talking to people that were both black and white in the course of this. And they're all using this, this word, gentrification. Gentrification? I think that is. And I thought, it dawned on me after hearing it many, many times over the course of this episode. You know, that's really, really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's disturbing. It's, um, I think, insulting to the populations that are there. Um, I, I would say that it's probably racist. Um, because, you know, it's based on the notion of the gentry, so the landed gentry from days gone by. And you, you, you had, you know, basically two classes of people. You had the unwashed masses, and you had the gentry, which were the, you know, the clean people that had the money and the land, and they were typically white. Um, and the unwashed masses might or might not be. Now, I did, I did look up the word, and, and one definition I saw uh, did not specifically shout out uh, with white people, but it did say it was the, the moving into an area of a more affluent uh, demographic than the people that are currently there. And so I don't know if that was the definition they were using, but you know they were using it specifically to talk about white people moving into an area. And... And in an area that has been predominantly black, this was part of Washington, D.C., they were talking about specifically. And I, and I just thought, you know, that is really... Um, yeah, and everybody was using it, using the term without, without really any self-consciousness. But I thought, you know, that is really a, a disturbing usage of the word. Because to me, because you're using a word that's based on gen... Uh, the gentry, the concept of the gentry, you're really saying that, you know, the people that are there, so, you know, to really kind of spell it out, that means that the whack people that have been living in this part of of Washington, D.C., they are the um, unwashed masses of that area. They're, they are um, the non-affluent. They are uh, the undesirables, even. Um, that was a subtext I was picking up. I'm not certain that everybody involved was was necessarily trying to portray that subtext, but uh, it was interesting. I mean, obviously, the whole episode is is about um, is about race in a particular context, uh, and I'll talk about that in another show. But uh, it's interesting to me that in a show about race, they're using this term and. It's racial overtones made me uncomfortable, but yet this is a three-episode series. I'm not through it for this particular podcast. Maybe that'll come up. I don't know. It hasn't yet, but I thought that was weird. And then the other thing I thought I'd talk about is actually from an I Should Be Writing podcast with with Mer Lafferty, and she was interviewing somebody, and I actually meant to look it up and see who it was, and I forget. Uh, but it was it was the last episode. So if you go on merverse.com and, and if you're curious, 
and look it up. Uh, it'll be the last episode as of this recording. But he was talking about, I got talking about ratings and, and, and reviewing books. And, and he said that, he said that, um, you know, he wants to do reviews. He wants to really do written reviews. But really all he, he's got the time to manage and able to manage is to put a star rating on it. And, and he figures, you know, that's better than nothing. And so he does what he can, and that's putting a star on it. And, you know, I, a little while ago, I said that I wanted to start being better at doing reviews. And I always put star ratings on things, but I don't always write out a review. And I did do a few, but I, I'm thinking I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to maybe be, yeah, I will maybe just do what I've done in the past, which is I only do a written review if I'm, if I'm, Kind of, uh, I've got the motivation to. You know, I liked it well enough that I feel like I want to say something about it. Um, the other thing he was talking about was the rating scale and how arbitrary the rating scales are. And you know, so if he likes a book, he says he gives it five stars. If there's like problems with it, he'll give it four stars, and 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 so on and so forth down the line. But he basically said he, he rare, you know, usually if you're under a three, he won't even bother giving you a review. Um, rather than give you a one or a two. And that got me thinking about my rating system that I use. I mean, because I'm, I'm using Amazon. I got the same five stars this guy has. But I, I've done it differently, and I'm kind of wondering if I shouldn't change that up. Because my personal rating system is, is if I read your book and I enjoy it, I would give you four stars. Now, if I read your book and it's totally awesome and I can't put it down, achieving what I call critical mass, to me, you know, critical mass of the book is, is, and some books hit it early and some books hit it late, but I get to a point where it's just like, I, I, I can't put it down. I cannot wait for the next page. I cannot wait for the next chapter to find out what happens. To me, that's achieving critical mass. Not every book does it. There are a lot of books I read that never quite get to that point. I mean, it's not that I am. I'm enjoying the book and I'm enjoying the story, but it doesn't quite go to that next level. Uh, it doesn't have that damage, that literary damage, you know, to, to kind of use an Emerald Lagasse um, metaphor there. And, and, and so I'm, I'm now wondering, you know, should I make that distinction? Is that fair? Uh, if I enjoy a book, should I give it five stars? And then four would be like, as a, well, because uh, there have been some that, that you know, I've read where I, I liked it, but there was a problem with plot or there's characters that are kind of two-dimensional or they cliffhangered it and it that pisses me off um you know or the formatting sucked and it was kept pulling me out of the story because they couldn't properly format an ebook and it, maybe those should be fours you know in, in my scheme i've 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 done where three is kind of a meh you know it's like it was okay Kind of, kind of thing, and I don't know that that would change overly much. I wouldn't give four stars to a book that I think was just okay, um, and I, and I don't, I don't know that I've ever given a two or a one um, to anybody. I mean, I'm not usually feeling that vindictive. If if I read a book and it and I don't think it's very good at all, yeah, I'll just move on, and I usually won't bother. I mean, I might, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know that I would bother putting stars on something like that. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm thinking about that. I might change my 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 rating scale. And if you read a book, if I read your book and I enjoy the story, uh, and there's no major flaws, you know. Now, obviously, if I read your book and 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 I enjoy the story, but on page 312. There's a comma that shouldn't be there, or we're missing an apostrophe. Or I'm not going to say, well, that's four stars. Um, I, I will tell you, um, there is 
uh, for Nathan Lowell's, um, I think it's Double Share. And I have the Raiden version. So for a while there, he was publishing his stuff through Raiden. And so that was where you bought the ebooks from. And so I've got the Raiden edition. And they did not publish... They did not publish the... Um, or they did not format the ebook correctly. They screwed up uh, the ellipses. So dot, dot, dot is what you're supposed to see. But instead, I would... You know, when I read it... Um, you see a, a bit of the um, HTML tag to create ellipses uh, that shows up every place there's an ellipses. And I don't know if it's true on every book, but in that book, Nate uses a lot of ellipses. And it annoys me. It does get annoying. Um, uh, in, in reading that one. You know, so if it's something like that, you know, there's been a few others, not too many, because in all honesty, you know, Doing an ebook really isn't that tough, but but every now and again uh, the, you'll be one where the bee has has something like that. Then I would I would I would be more than willing to knock it down. It was a consistent problem that I'm that I'm seeing all throughout the book. Um, you know, then I think that would be a four, even if I enjoyed the story. And if it's yeah, if it's kind of like yeah, this, the story was kind of weak and 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 the characters were kind of dull, then maybe that you know that would probably get a three from me. And if it's worse than that, then then uh, you probably wouldn't get anything at all. So I, I might decide to adopt that that modified that modified thing uh, scale there. I, I, I'm going to think about that, you know, because then it's kind of like, well, you know, I've got I've got what five years of ebooks that are kind of with the other scale, but I, I'm certainly not going to go back and go, well, I really like that, so I'll make it a five, you know, unless I reread it and then I might then I might do it. Um, and I'm, as with everything in the Share series, I'm pretty sure that book of Nathan's that I'm talking about is already at five stars, even with the, the, the annoying formatting gaff that Ryden did there. You know, and, and part of that is, is because I know it came from a publisher and it's not, it's not Nathan's fault, um, that that's like that. And I think he actually, I think I mentioned it to him once, and I think he sent me the ebook. Uh, he sent me a Mobi file that's got it fixed. Um, I just, I just don't know that I ever loaded it on my Kindle. I should probably do that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm already almost the 13th, so uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be back tomorrow or not with an episode. I currently have no feedback at all to go through. Um, I don't know that I've got something I want to talk about. Uh, and I've got uh, kind of a, a men's barbecue to go to uh, tomorrow that's going to be running from like 9.30 to probably 3.30, 4 o'clock. So I may not get a podcast out tomorrow. We will see what happens. But um, at any rate, I will be back on Monday, if nothing else. And I'll be talking to you then. So... Seeing you.